Batteries are devices converting chemical energy to receive power. They consist of two electrodes initiating chemical reactions that involve or generate electrons. The electrodes are connected to each other using a special solution called electrolyte, which helps the ions move around completing electric circuits. Electrons are produced on the anode, and they can move through the external circuit to the cathode. This is nothing more than a flow of electrons or electric current. This phenomenon can be used to improve a whole number of simplest devices. In our case, a battery can be made using these two reactions. First, a reaction with aluminium would generate electrons for one of the electrodes. And two, a reaction with oxygen using the electrons on the other electrode. To help the electrons inside the battery get access to the oxygen contained in the air, we can make the second electrode using the material that can conduct electricity but is not active, like coal, which for the most part consists of carbon. Activated carbon has lots of pores, which often provides us with a large area exposed to atmosphere. Only one gram of activated carbon can in fact appear larger in area than an entire soccer field. In this experiment, we will build a battery using the two reactions discussed earlier. And the most amazing thing is, homemade batteries can feed even a small motor or a light bulb. So today we will need aluminum foil, scissors, rulers, activated coal, metal spoons, paper towels, salt, a small cup, water, two electrical wires with clips on ends, and a small electric device, like a battery-powered direct current motor or luminant. First, let's cut out a piece of aluminium foil, approximately 15 by 15 centimeters in size. Now we will make a saturated solution, mix salt and water in a small cup, and stir until individual undissolved particles of salt settle at the bottom of the cup. Fold the paper towel by one-fourth, soak it in salt, water, and put onto the foil. Now let's add about a teaspoon of activated coal on top of the paper towel and crush it carefully into small bits using the reverse side of the spoon. We then pour the salt water onto the coal to make it wet. Make sure the coal is wet entirely, but do not touch the foil directly. OK, so you should have three layers, like in the sandwich. Then we need to get our electric devices ready for use. Let's attach one of the ends of our electrical wire to the load. The other end should be connected to the aluminum foil. Press the second wire tightly to the coal and see what happens. If the battery works fine, then it might as well be that you will need another element to power your device. Now, let's try and increase the contact area between the wire and the charcoal by putting together the entire battery and pressing it hard. If it is a motor you are using, you might want to help it start by rotating the shaft. The first modern electric battery was a representative of electrochemical cells called a voltaic pile. Now, let's repeat steps 1 through to 3 to build additional aluminium air elements. You can increase the power of your battery by connecting two or three aluminium air elements to each other. Use a multimeter to measure the voltage and current generated by your battery. You might wonder how to alter your battery so that it produces higher voltage or current. Calculate the output capacity of the battery by multiplying this voltage by its current. Now, try connecting other devices that require higher voltage or current to a battery.